you've never been a writer who's sort of reached for technological forms. Oh, I'll have video here, I'll have <sighs> moving this here, I'll have giant hydraulic, why not? I mean, I worship Robert Lepage and what he does is phenomenal. So not to put it all, but to me, for instance, in Glory, Ken and I were talking about projections. There's a guy who did the projections for Crash, who I think was wonderful, so simple, just drawing. Um, I, I mean, film project projections I have real trouble with. I think, well, just make a film. Why yeah. do you need to show us <laughs> film? It's theater. That's the beauty of it. It's the concert. It's the poetry. It's you, you don't need all those images. You have a designer do a theatrical set that is another dimension. But why? Do you, I mean, we are all hypnotized by film. Don't you find, even in a play, as soon as there's a film, I'm like, just instantly. And your theater is still spoken word theater? Spoken word, absolutely. Do you know, I noticed for the next Women's International Festival in South Africa, all they're asking for is non-text. Yeah, visual or in collaboration and, and all of it. It is as, you know, Timberlake and I were talking about this. She said there's an anti-text moment and any, anybody with a tape recorder thinks they can write a play. Well, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm democratic in that way that a lot of people could write a play, they just don't. But the same time, the writer's voice, and it's not an ego thing. The director in this city said to me, I'm here now, the reign of the playwright is over, the tyranny of the playwright. And I said, what are you talking about? We all respect each other, and this is one of the few places where director... Who was it? I can't say. Oh, it. come on. And um, I, so I said to him, I said, it's, it's beautifully collaborative, and this is one of the places where playwrights are respected, and we respect actors and direct. We all respect each other. And the actors it participates in literature, in the dramatic literature. That's what they dig down deeply. And there's no hierarchy. And well, and then in Germany, places like that, there are, because it's, you know, they mangle everything. Many of those directors and producers stand for it, is they want to move theater away from text-based core to a visual, a great to, this, to an image. What, what are they, what's happening there? I just call it dance. I love dance. Dance is great, but it's dance. <laughs> I think it's the same thing that misogyny is. Misogyny often, I think, on a primal level, is jealousy of the primary creator, a woman. They can't do that. And I think that they're, you, they're threatened by the primary creator, that we wrote it, it came from us, it came through us even more so. The best material, always just I'm channeling, basically, and then I'd fix it. Um, but I see that. I, I see... I see it in, in some directors more than, more than act, not, not in actors. I never see it in actors. I sort of sense it, it, it bec and Lepage is one of the exceptions, but the kind of visual, visual based, high, imagistic, high, becomes like an art product in a yeah. way that I'm supposed to watch and wonder at and admire. And Robert is not like that. No, he's not. He ain't an art product. He is exploring something. His text is important. Something. It's just a part of it. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Whereas with words from a writer yeah. who then draws me down into the blood and guts, as yeah. it were, I can't stand back and watch it at a distance no. as, what a wonderful product. That's it. I am sucked into that world yeah. of the Lindy in England and all yeah. the rest of it. And I can't get out and I'm covered with blood and emotion yeah. by the time I come out. Yeah. So maybe that push is to get a remove from the blood and guts and the, and the spirituality of it all. I, don't know. I think so. I, 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 they want to get, I hate art that's arch, clever. A lot of the visual art world is about humor and cleverness. And it's not that I believe in going back to landscapes, although they can be nice. I absolutely understand that they don't want prettiness. But uh, I don't like cuteness and cleverness. It's this is just boring. You know, you... We're all so busy. God, you spend money and you spend two hours and right, you're right. bored and you could be doing something. Right. It just feels like an assault. Right. And you just think, yeah, that's cute. That's clever. Okay, I'm uh, five minutes in now. So let's just talk a little bit about Robert Lepage then because he is cutting up. He's cutting a unique place that some people said, oh, wow, visual effects, too many hydraulics. And other people like us go, no, he's... No, there's something profound. What is it? Where, what's it's pretty doing? amazing how, how deeply he digs. And oh, they all do. And he's the first to say it's an ensemble. He's just the name at the head. That, for instance, Seven Streams of River Ota, usually I, I'm a really restless person. I don't, for a writer, I don't like sitting more than an hour even. Seven hours. And I could have had seven more. It's difficult to describe, isn't it? He took us into history, into 
the soul, uh, and he does it with a bunch of chairs. And I like it. I do prefer it when it's simple. A bunch of shoes, chairs, boxes. Um, but if he wants to do the hydraulics, anything he wants to do. It's like he has a different rhythm of narrative. It, yeah. Right? He has a very slow rhythm. Yeah. Yes, he does. Pulls you into a different way. And most of exciting uh, dramas are, you know, in, in, go, go, edge, yeah, edge, edge. movies. And he walks the other direction. That's right. I love it. Yeah. It's, and it's unique. And it's not like anything. But yeah. I think we, and there are a lot of young playwrights coming up and texty playwrights. And um, we're, we're going to... We will survive. We will survive. Let's talk about women writers yeah. for a moment. Because, yeah. again, a lot of the characters you choose to sort of head into the story are, are women. Then there's Lynn Cody, who just won the Giller. Mm -hmm. And then there's Alice Munro, who just won, won the mm -hmm. Nobel. And I'm saying, well, what is it that the voice from women, as you say, the primary creator, uh, that wonderful theory that I love, that actually men misogyny or jealous of women because mm. women can create naturally mm -hmm. and men are somehow outside of yeah, that. Yeah, and now especially not needed, yeah. And especially not needed. So what is happening with these women's voices that are rightfully rising to the top of you know, well, fiction? And yeah. Drama? I remember very disappointingly my father once said to me years ago, and otherwise he was a wonderful guy, but he said, look, even at, at traditional women's activities, men surpass them, cooking, tailors. And I, and I was just going, yeah, <laughs> as a completely indoctrinated John. Otherwise, he was pretty progressive. And I, I'm really angry at him posthumously for saying that. But uh, I think there have always been those voices, the George Sand, the Jane Austens. They, um, the, the women have always been there, and they've just been suppressed and not recognized or have to disguise their name. Uh, and I don't think it's now more than ever. I mean, Alice Monroe's been writing for 50 years. It's just she's being recognized right. now. It's interesting about those TV shows that we were talking about where the great writing is. Almost all of them are extremely male-centered. And I, I admire them. I love The Sopranos, Breaking Bad. I think that it's just awesome, incredible. Um, but it's very, very male. And I want to know what is that, and why aren't there just as strong female voices? In a very naughty way, the female voice has also emerged in Michelle Bachman and yes. Sarah Palin and, and, and Margaret Coulter. Thatcher and Claire Coulter and Angela Merkel. Yeah. So as the woman's voice in other politics or writing as fiction is there, but it's come out in all colors. I mean, is Sarah Palin? in fact, enacting a scenario that is not her own, psychologically, yeah. is Michelle Bachman. Right. Or are they really sourcing something? Now, that's them. I mean, that's them. And Ann Coulter, just frightening, Anne? like drag queen. Why uh, did you write about Ann Coulter? Yeah, I, I actually did write. Um, I was asked to write something for Wrecking Ball, and it was just when this article came out in Maclean's, like the Asian, it was almost like the Asian peril they're taking over the universities. They posed it as a question, but it was very racist. And uh, Richard Yee or somebody like that was running it, and so I wrote a kind of Asian and culture. It was really fun. <laughs> it was a really fun monologue, and Marjorie Chan did, did it brilliantly. And wow. Yeah, it is. I would like to do that. I think that's really interesting. Yes, and I guess you're asking, are they taking on a male script yep. in order to be successful? So they do the the horrific female appearance script, the blonde dyed hair, super makeup, plunging bear, arms, Sarah miniskirts. Sarah Palin, they're all yeah. doing it, right? They're all made up oh, yeah. in that form. Yeah. I mean, Margaret Thatcher wasn't, and neither Angela Merkel is just who she is, and Hillary Clinton, but right. so they're criticized for it hugely. Right. right. Hugely. 